Alright, this morning we'll be taking a pine cube and turning it into something similar to this Douglas fir lit box. Alright, the cube has been roughed down into a small cylinder. I'm now going to put it in the chuck and get ready to par it off. I typically turn the lid first and then the bottom of the box last. So, let's use my smaller tenon for the lid. Lightly put it in, bring tailstock up. sure it's shoulders seated good. Give her a snug tightening. Checking to make sure everything is in line. Oh, safety glasses. I typically don't measure anything, I just kind of eyeball. For me, it's quicker to just grab the cordless drill instead of putting the Jacob's chuck to make my depth hole. Now to set my inset, nice and parallel, just come in, using my skew as a negative brake scraper. Okay, still have a little bit to go. Depth good. I think I'm gonna go back and add a little bit more to the depth of the lid see. Alright. Happy with the finish off that last pass. Now I'm going to make a small slicing cut just to clean up the torn grain from the 
already know. Everything's locked in. Now, never let this point touch the wood. That's pretty good, but I'm a little too tall there. I'm going to chuck this back up and go deeper with my seat on my rim, or I can just turn that off a little bit. I still got a little bit of a seam, but I'm going to do another slicing cut here and here to true that up at the end. Now you can either start hollowing or you can go ahead and put it together and shape your outside. I tend to go ahead and put it together then shape my outside. Let's go ahead and do our slicing cut. All right, perfect fit. Now I'll go ahead before I do my shape of the outside of the box. Go ahead and match up my grain best as possible. Sometimes I have to look at the actual growth rings. By going ahead and matching up this grain, if there's any wobble in your lathe, vibration, or worn bearings, or whatever, you can take that all out right there in the final project or product. It's just a little wooden center that I put over my cup. Almost don't need sandpaper right there.
no matter how good I try, I still cannot get a flawless finish on the cut with the spindle gouge there. So I go back to the skew, do my final cut, clean up any torn in grain. At this point, I stop it. A little bit of tape to hold the lid on. I actually pull the tailstock back out of the way. Okay, depth's pretty good. Got just a little bit of torn grain. Square carbide, just to flatten up the bottom. There I go, laying tools down again, not putting them back where they belong. As you can see, great finish straight off of the tool. No sand and need it there. So what I'm going to do now is use this lip, pretty much like a tenon. Put it in, give it just a ever so light squeeze. Right 
turn my tail stock back up. Give her a little bit of pressure. Just a hair bit more squeeze on that lip. Don't want to squeeze too much or you'll crush it in. Everything looks good. Make sure I got a little bit of a belly in there, a little bit of undercut. This one we're going to do a little beef like finish on. Hmm. Right there at the very end, this one developed a small crack. Probably due to the pith being right at the edge of that lid. A little thin ZA. Apparently I've never opened this one before. Ah. Uh, I think I have. I think it's done dry up on me. Alright. Still have it. 
cute little pine lidded box with an almost invisible seam. Nice little friction fit. Actually turned out slightly better than I thought.